everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Let's jump in and get started. Uh, I talked to you a little bit last time about quilting borders and corners without the gold features of borders and corners. So with that being said, um, sizing is a little more difficult um, and it's a little harder for you to place it exactly in and have it sew correctly onto your quilt. So that's what makes borders and corners ugh, just a wonderful feature to be able to purchase and add. So let's jump in. I have had a lot of quilters ask, well, why don't you quilt your side borders as you're quilting all the way down your quilt, one at a time? Um, and we're going to talk about that today, and I'm going to show you why it's easier to turn your quilt and quilt that section all at once rather than sewing one at a time all the way down. Sizing is a huge factor that plays into this, and it, there's a little more, a few more calculations that you have to use to get it to sew pretty good. Okay, I'm going to show you the one <laughs> on the right side that I sewed. And notice I did it and I sized it just exactly the same size that I, as I sized the center one up here at the top um, in between the two corners. And notice how it sewed up and off. Um, and that's because my placement was a little harder and also the sizing was a little bit because I want it to look cohesive and I want it to look roughly the same size, but the calculations are a little different when you're sewing down your quilt one at a time. So let's jump in and sew the left side so you can see what I did to um, quilt this. So I went through a couple of different processes as I was writing the, the help files. Because I wanted to, because we get asked that question so often, I wanted you to be able to understand why <laughs> I don't like this method. But you'll soon find out. Okay, so I went into select and sew. Let's first go out. No, I'm not going to save my design. Okay, so I first went into select and sew thinking that I could size it and turn it correctly. Uh-uh. That was really hard and very difficult for me to do. And I couldn't find a placement method that really worked well. Even one point placement, if I put it on start and you couldn't flip it, it wanted to, to move back to how it was designed originally. So it would turn and wouldn't turn and flip correctly. So I decided I, as I was thinking about it, I thought, Hey, I can put the sizing in in panograph mode, and so that's what I did. So I went from select and sew, and I went into panograph, and that's what I'm going to have you do. So if you want to try this at home, tr try it on a quilt that you don't really care about. You know, I know we love to make all these cute little quilts, but just give it a try. So you can learn the method because it really actually helps you as you're thinking through um designs and how to um, turn and flip them. It really helps you understand the creation of them and how to really quilt and to become a better quilter. So uh, it's a challenge I'm going to throw out there and have you try um, because I feel like it's one of those important windows of trying new things that helps us become better quilters. So, all right. So I have my measurements from last time. And so make sure if you're walking away from your quilt that you're taking, snapping a picture and storing them someplace where you can come back and get, gather them rather than going through the same process and you won't e e get the same exact size as you got the last time. So very important for you to have them accessible if you're going to walk away. So I have my measurements and my depth, and that's really the height of my design is 4.477. And I changed it from easy to basic. I just thought that was a little easier. I want to put in 4.477, and that's going to be my total height. Now the width of it, or the length, is 6.338. And now I'm just going to tap on OK. So now my total width, and that's the length of my design, is 6.338, and that's my measurement. And then my total height of my design is 
0.4477. Now, what I want to do is use my marking tool to kind of mark the area that I want to place this in to make sure I'm as close as possible. So you don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm going to um, because I really think it'll help. And on this one, I don't want it to move outside, so I've drawn right here a little uh, seam allowance, and this is where I'd put my binding. So I want to make sure that I'm sewing, the design is going to sew small enough to fit in this area right here. So I'm going to come in here and notice across the top here, I'm in my read pattern screen, I want you to notice all the different file folders for all the different patterns. I'm coming over here to my border sets, which I'm already in, and tapping on it, and it's going to open up the border designs. I'm using my curly Q GPF, and I'm going to select it, and once the blue box has surrounded it, I'm going to select it and open. All right, so there's my design. Now I'm going to place as a single pattern because it's just one single design. So I'm going to open it up and notice I'm in one point. I'm going to come up here to my plugins and there's my marking tool. And I'm going to mark down my quilt and, and just kind of give me a rough measurement of, so I have some line to draw. So, and I'm going to move it in. And so I went down my right, my left side. And now I'm going to move up my left side, across and up, and right there on the seam. And then I'm just going to move across. Okay. So that's my little area that I want to place my design in. So this is going to give me a reference point on my screen so that I can keep my design in there. All right, so now I can get out of the marking tool and notice over here in the toolbox, I did it up here, but I'm gonna come up here in my toolbox and you'll notice you have the ruler and then placements. I'm gonna tap on placements, oops, sorry. And now I'm back to my placement screen. Okay, so, I'm going to use two point placement. I tried one point and it was a little more difficult, but I'm going to show you both ways. Okay. So let's stay with one point. And because this design, and um, I have it a one point corner placement. Notice right here, you have all these little settings to where you can place the node. This little gray thing um, is a placement node. A little gray circle and the placement node can change positions on this placement method so if I tap on start it's going to move to where this design will start sewing if I tap on and it's going to move to the end portion of where it stops sewing and then we have center and then corner um, center is just going to push it to the center and then you saw what corner did so because this design this is where I started sewing my corner design right here on the quilt. I want to start the end of this. So I want to change it to end. All right. And then I want to move my machine needle or my foot and my needle over to where it started sewing right there. And then I'm going to tap on this little node. Okay. So notice that it, it's sewing from um, left to right, and I want it to sew vertically. Is it vertically? Yeah, I want it to sew down from top to bottom. All right, so I want to flip it. So I'm going to flip it, and let's see what happens or if I have to reverse it. And I don't want it to flip that way. <laughs> so I let's try that. Okay, so it's going to start sewing, and it's not even going to work. So let's reset, all right? And now let's reverse my, see this is why this is a little harder um, to do because I could have it flipped correctly and now I can do the start point and I move my node up there and that will probably work. So you just have to play around with it and figure out how it's going to sew and see I moved it there, and it looks like it's going to sew pretty good. And it's going to come up and around, and then sew. So let's go for it and see what happens. See how it quilts.
So I'm moving all my stuff so that you can see through the wonders of tele of internet what happens. So I want to pull um, my bottom thread up and make sure. So I'm going to just kind of move my needle and just make sure my placement is correct and make sure that it's not moving off of there. And I want to be able to now go in and tap on quilt. Okay, so I'm ready to quilt my quilt, but I want to bring my bottom thread up. So you can either go into your toolbox or do your single stitch. We're just going to tap on single stitch. I'm going to pull my thread up. All right, and let's tap on sew. And I'm going to stand back away because I don't want to push on the pole or anything and distort the design. Oh, see, I screwed it up. Oh, well. I thought it was going to sew correctly, but I should have flipped it. And we're going to have to do that one again and make sure it's sewing correct. And see, without the borders and quarters and fabric comp, it makes it a little harder. So this is why. It's easier for you to turn your quilt <laughs> and do it correctly. So just, just know that we're going to try it one more time. But see, when it's in this, I can just keep going all the way down. So we're going to roll it just once. And I'm going to put my needle in the down position. I'm going to tap on finish. Put my needle in the down position. All right. All right. And now I can gently roll it. Don't roll it too hard. So just I just want to gently roll it. Let me pull my stuff out. We're going to do it one more time. Now let's go up a little further. All right. I think that's far enough. Let me lock it into place. All right. So now that it's there, I want, I can go back and replace it and keep going down. So let me make sure I'm marking. And actually, you'll want to mark it. And you will also want to make sure that you tack it down. Because just in case it sews up off, you don't want the foot to come back in and catch it. So I'm going to bring it up off. And I'm going to pull it up. And you know what? I'm not going to even unpick this because I'm not that worried about it. But I hate to unpick. I want to tell you that. So if this was one of my beautiful quilts that I was really worried about, I would be unpicking. I promise you. Um, so I want to just make sure that I tack this down because if the foot comes up and off and it's hopping along, it's going to catch underneath and it's going to fold it over. And sometimes the foot gets sewn into place because it can't move anywhere. So make sure that you're tacking down your quilt. Now, a lot of people want to know, oh, do you, do you go to the base mode? No, I don't go to the base mode. I just lower my number. And my stitch length right here. So I could go down a little smaller if I wanted to. And then just turn it on. And I just move it down. Real quick, 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 quick. All right. Now I'm just going to move it back. And see, notice that if I had to do any unpicking or anything like that. or And notice how I pushed on the fabric or on the quilt top just to keep my tension so I didn't get any wrinkles. So this is a really good rule of thumb all the way across. So it just helps keep your tension. So make sure you use that spacing. All right, so now I'm going to come back over here and I am going to replace my design. Okay, and I have my marking tool over here and what I'm going to do is go into 
my toolbox down to my marking tool and I'm going to say remove all and I'm just going to quickly draw my line all the way down to about right there come across and see this is a little more time consuming but you know it's that little challenge that I'm putting out there for you to try all right and I'm not even well I think I will I'll go across okay so notice I, how I completed it now I'm going to go back and I'm going to make sure that I've placed my design correctly and I have and so now I can jump in and quilt And now I can bring my needle up, my thread up, sorry. And we're going to tap on sew. But imagine stopping and starting all the way down a big, huge quilt. Ah. This one's going to sew a little better. So, and then when I get down to here, who knows what it's going to look like because I have to place my borders and corners right here. So we're going to roll it and that's what we're going to do with my bottom section. Okay. And then I'm going to have to adjust this last one here to see how well it will sew. So that's the challenges that you face with um, quilting down your quilt one design, your border design, all the way down your quilt one design at a time. All right, let's ask some questions. Okay, so I have to move a little closer. <laughs> it says, why are you only doing one swirl at a time with such a large throat space? Well, it's because I have to make sure that my adjustments and my sizing is correct. Now, if I turn my quilt, <laughs> then I can do more than one at a time. But because this design is sized. I want to make sure um, that it's sewing correctly. So that's why. So if I turn the quilt, I can do, um, yes, and I should have traced first. And I did not. Thank you, Belinda. That there is a trace mode and you can see how the design will sew before it sews. So learn from my mistakes. Do not make them. Um, that's what I'm here for, is to show you what not to do. <laughs> so, anyway, any more questions out there? Will you show the measurements one more time? Um, yes, I will show you the measurements one more time. Now, if you are concerned about your measurements, well, let's go back in and I will show you that. And then I'm going to roll the quilt. We're going to do our bottom corners and border. And then I'll show you how to do this next week, how to fill in this area right here. So we're just going to turn it and call it good. All right, so I'm going to tap on finished. I'm going to pull my threads. And cut them really quick. All right, so now I'm going to come back in. And I'm going to get out of the screen totally because I'm going to roll my quilt and do my two bottom corners and my center section right here. And so I'm going to get out of the screen. And now I'm going to be back into the pantograph screen. And now you asked about the measurements. In the pantograph screen, you have your total width, okay, which is the length of your design, okay? The total height is the depth or the height that you want the design. So don't get them confused because it can be very confusing. So the total width, I wanted the length of this design to be about six and three eighths inches. And then the height was almost four and a half. It wasn't quite four and a half tall. So just make sure you're putting them in correctly. If it doesn't look right, use your trace mode and you'll see um, how it works. It works really well. So. Okay, let's roll our quilt and let's get moving to the bottom border. All right, it's a problem with having so much stuff. So I'm just going to move to the bottom border 
I'm not even going to fill in any of the other area we're talking about. I'm going to lock this into place and then I'm going to tack it down. Okay. So let me just finish tacking this down and show you how I do it really quick. Okay, so as I come to the corner, notice how it's kind of a little uneven. I'm going to kind of pull it so it's a little stretchy. But if you find that it's really uneven, sometimes if you just kind of pull the side that's a little shorter like this, it kind of gives you that little extra. So you need to straighten it out because it's just all in how it's rolling. So let's just hurry and tack this down. And I'm just going to come all the way down to this corner. Okay, and if you find it easier just to pull it as you're going across, just pull it. And then I like to kind of pull it down. Just kind of pull it down like this. And stay as close to the edge as possible. And notice that as I'm kind of pulling it, it's kind of giving me that tension that I need. So I'm not going to have any little puckers on it. So now I want to move up. So I want to do the same thing. I just kind of want to pull it. Well, I notice I went off of it, but that's okay. The belts will kind of force you one direction or the other. There we go. Watch your fingers. It's easy for me to get talking and catch my fingers. I've done it several times. So, and not watch what I'm doing. So, you know, don't have interruptions while you're sewing across your quilt. I can tell you it does hurt to sew your finger and not pleasant. All right. Well, now we're ready to sew our corners. So I'm just going to show you again. So on these bottom corners, there's a little trick to them because we have to turn them more than 45 degrees. I have to do it a couple times all the way around so it'll sew correctly. So let's just hurry in do that. So we're going to get out of the pantograph to set our corners. So we're going to go to our home screen up here on the top left. You're going to tap on the home. It's going to ask me if I want to save my design. Yes, you can save it if you want to. Okay. It's always good to be able to have it sized correctly. So to save your design, it could be really important and you might want to use it over and over and over again. Not on the state, uh, not on probably another quilt because it'll be sized differently. But for the quilt, if you're going to use that same design over and over again, you don't want to calculate the resizing of it. Make sure that you're saving it somewhere. Okay. And then we're going to say no because I'm not going to save it. And then we're going to move over here to our select and sew because I wrote down my measurements. Okay. So we're going to move over here to select and sew. I'm going to tap on my curly cube border, I'm um, corner and open it up. Okay. So remember, I want one point and I want my corner placement. All right. So on my one point corner placement, now I am going to size um, my design. So it fits within my 11. So my corner design has different measurements than um, my one single um, border design. Okay. So this is my corner design. And so I'm going to tap on the window and open it up and put my 11.035 and tap on OK. And then I'm going to tap on the bottom one and put my, that's pretty close, 11.036. Say OK. And now I want to come up here to my plugins. Go to my marking tool. So remember, the marking tool is two spots, okay? Um, and I want to erase um, this design, um, this uh, marking tool placement that I did over here. I wanted to get rid of it. So I just want to say remove all, and it disappears. And now I want to move up. And you can do it left or right. It does not matter, okay? And I'm just going to kind of start placing my design. And I'm using my foot as a guide to help me know my quarter of an inch. 
So if I, I pull it across my seam and then I just kind of put it right here, that's kind of my quarter of an inch. And then I'm just going to come all the way up, tap, and then I'm going to come in. And now I have a seam line that will act as my guide. I want to come all the way up to this corner, tap, and then across. Tap on that little add with that plus. And now we're done. Okay, that's all the further I'm going to go. So now I have a marking that I can place my corner design. Okay, so let's do this corner first, all right? Because it's just easier for me, okay? So now I want to tap on my 45. Tap, tap. And now I want this little gray node to be over here on this corner. So I'm going to tap, tap. So you're going to do it four, four times. We're going to come over here and we're going to place it. And, and look, it's pretty good. We're going to go with it and we're going to hurry and quilt it. And now I'm going to, now I, I, like I showed you, you could move to, move to start and then pull your single stitch if you want to. So it's going to start right there. All right. And now I can do my little single stitch and let's sew. Now, as you're quilting, you can spend a little more time perfecting this method, uh, but that's what Borders and Corners does. It's perfected this method and made it so much easier for you. So, let's answer a few questions. Kathy is asking, I do not have the automation. I am totally free motion. So, would you say it is okay to quilt your quilt except the side borders and take it off the frame and put it back on doing the sideboard. You know what? That's how I do all of my quilts. Even I love the free motion quilt as well. Don't get me wrong. Automation is just another form of quilting. And, and I love what it allows me to do. But I love to challenge myself with free motion quilting. And so I think it's easier for you to make your design look more even and accurate if you take your quilt off and turn it to quilt the side borders, that section in between. Because it allows you to quilt all the way across without so many stops and starts. So I'm a big proponent of it. So, so try it out. You quilt how you want to quilt. I want you to come up with new ways and quicker ways to do it. I just don't think that quilting one section at a time is the most efficient and most accurate way of quilting um, down your quilt. Now, there are, are people or quilters out there that would probably disagree with me, and that's fine. That's what makes this such a great, um, a great craft to be in is because we have so many different opinions out there that we can really expand our way of quilting and make it our own. So anyway, so that's that corner. We're going to do one more, and then we're going to quilt our center section. But notice that it quilted really nice um, and within the area pretty good. Um, it just is all on how the it sews And then I just don't want to take up too much of your time, and I don't want it to be confusing either. Really, this is just such a fun process, and we love to quilt. Okay, so now I have my settings and I have my markings and everything. So I want to make sure that I am turning another two taps on my 45, tap, tap, so now my little placement node is on this corner, and I'm just going to come and place it right here and then sew it off. Look, pretty good. We're just going to go with it, and then we can quilt 
It's, it's quick. And now I am going to pull up. I'm just going to kind of guess. All right. Well, let's, so I'm going to move all the way that direction. Oh, stop. Oh, you know what? I was a little confused. So I'm going to let it do its thing. <laughs> It's starting over here because I flipped it. That will be a tell that I will pull off the back. Don't second guess yourself. Sometimes I get overthinking it. Don't overthink it. That's what I did with the one single design over here. I was overthinking it. this is giving you ideas on what and how you want to quilt. And when I'm quilting borders, even using the free motion, I will section them off into sections so that my free motion is giving me, because I don't have that automation to scale it to be exactly the size that I want it. So I have to have those parameters as I'm free motion quilting across my quilt. So sometimes I will do them um, this way. I'll make it the center. So I'm proportionally making it centered along my border. And I'll also give me little guidelines so that I'm going to stop maybe a section of a border here and here, and then keep going all the way across. So those are little tips that I know will really help you as you're quilting either um, in using free motion quilting. So just section it off so it quilts that much nicer and easier for you. All right, so we're just going to quilt this little center one here. And I'm just going to tap on finished. But I, you know what? Let's answer some questions here. And then I will show you that next week. I'm going to show you the centers and how I'm going to finish off this area with all my little mistakes that I made. Oh, well, we'll be a good Marine and we'll adapt, we'll overcome and we'll make it work. Okay. So anyway, any more questions that are out there? Um, Belinda, this lesson on corners and borders is so informative. Oh, good. I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, it is really easy to overthink. She she commented about the overthinking because it can be. We can get so caught up in the numbers and the sizing and the flipping, just like I did. I mean, I showed you <laughs> what not to do. But just make sure that you're sitting back and enjoy the process. And the more times you use it, the more comfortable you become with your quilting and the more confident quilter you will be. So thanks for joining me. And next week, I'm going to finish this up and show you what I've done. Um, and we're going to fix all my little mistakes. Not going to unpick, though. Not going to unpick. So thanks for joining me. And I will see you next week. And make sure you head to that website. Stock up on those extra accessories. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.